Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel called Zuzana Reacts where I learn all things parallel with your help and I just share my Slovak Central European point of view and in today's video we are going to look at the video of Project Shiva it's about uh, supercomputing I think uh, and uh, I'm quite curious to get into that considering you know all the advancements in technology considering the fact that you know quantum computing is just around the corner so I am super curious what uh, this is going to teach us and me uh, mainly I would presume that you might know some of that if not uh, that's like super great we can learn together but before we get into the video Please like this video and click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification. Thank you so much for your support. All right, let's kick this video off. Bharati Yaganitam, a documentary series that we started some time ago on this channel, Project Shiva Home, to bring forward all the great contributions that came from Bharat in the field of mathematics over thousands of years. Till now, on this channel, we produced three episodes, Bharati Yaganitam, The Mindset, Origins of Vedic Geometry, Origins of Negative Numbers. For certain reasons, last seven to eight months, I could not produce a single doc film in this lineup. Now I'm trying to restart the subject with the fourth episode, The Ancient Indian Algorithms on Supercomputing. Let's get started. So as usual, let's cut this doc film into three chapters. The first chapter, let's try and understand the background and context of what the supercomputing is all about. And in the second chapter, let's try and understand the algorithms defined for supercomputing. And lastly, in the third chapter, let's try and understand the key takeaways. And in the context of key takeaways, let me emphasize the reason or objective why I started this web series of Bharatiya Gandhi. These are going to be very short doc films, unlike the other ones which are going to go for 30 minutes and 40 minutes. These will be 10 minutes or under 10 minutes, just to provide the authentic references about the inventions and discoveries happened in the field of mathematics in ancient Bharat. So these videos are going to be very brief to the point and especially these videos will help students or anyone who would like to pick up research in this field to get the right coordinates. So with that said, let's get started. So let's get to the first chapter, the background and context. Let us take a small Samskritam slokam. Shown here is a snippet from Bhavani Ashtakam written by Jagat Guru Adi Shankarachari. And it goes like this. Na tato, na mata, na bandhur, na data, na putro, na putri, na bhruptyo, na bharta, na jaya, na vidya, na vruptir, mamaiva, gatistvam, gatistvam, tvameka, bhavani. As you can feel, obviously there is a wave pattern while reciting this slokam. That is because Adi Shankaracharya composed this slokam as an alternating sequence of short syllables and long syllables. As you can see here, all the black letters are short syllables and all the red letters are long syllables. Now, what is a syllable? It is just about how you spell a given letter. And if it has just vowel, it is called a short syllable. And if it's a combination of vowel and a consonant, then it is called as a long syllable. In Samskritam, a short syllable is called as laghu and a long syllable is called as guru. As you can see here, this slokam, no matter who recites it, just by reciting itself, you can feel that rhythmic pattern embedded into the slokam by Adi Shankaracharya. Creating such kind of a slokam, or for that matter, any piece of poetry, it's all about wordplay, how you pick and choose different words to convey the right meaning and bring in the right rhythm. In Samskritam, there are predefined rhythmic templates, which you need to fill in with the words that you pick and choose and construct. And these rhythmic templates enforce you to create such kind of words which will exactly fit in this template in terms of combinations of Guru and Lagu. And because of that combination of these letters fit well into these rhythmic templates, Samskritam slokas are produced that give an effect of rhythm when anyone recites it. Take this piece of Vishnu Sastranamam for instance. Visvam Vishnu Vashatkaro Bhuta Bhavya Bhavat Prabhu Bhuta Krut Bhuta Bhrudbhavo Bhuta Atma Bhuta Bhavarha Bhuta Atma Paramatma Ta Mukta Nam Paramagati Avyaya Purusha Sakshi Kshetra Gnokshara Yevacha Yogo Yoga Vidham Neta Pradhana Purusha Svaraha Nara Simhava Pushriman Keshava Purusha Uttamaha as you can listen, there is a rhythm embedded in Vishnu Sahasranama. That is because a rhythmic template called as Anustub is chosen to create Vishnu Sahasranama by Bhishma Chari. Now the base for Vishnu Sahasranama is the rhythmic template called Anustub Chandas. And this template enforces you to create such kind of words which when put together create a harmonious effect when you recite them. And the subject matter that governs this entire process is called as Chandas Shastram. Chanda Shastram heavily deals with creation of word combinations to fit into this rhythmic templates to produce Samskritam slokas which are bound by Chandas, making them easy to recite and memorize and recall. So our main interest in picking up the subject is while picking these letters 
and creating the word combinations that fit exactly into these rhythmic templates, yeah. there is a heavy and advanced mathematics involved wow. in Bharat as part of Chanda Shastra. And I'm not using the word advanced just like that. I mean it and I stand by it. It is highly, highly, highly advanced mathematics as part of Chanda Shastra. Let's try and understand. Okay. This is the landscape of the Vedic education system, which I presented in many of my doc films. As wow. you see here, Chanda Shastram is a Vedanga that gives the linguistic rhythm, making the Vedic subject easily memorizable and recitable so that you don't have to carry a book all the time. Just memorize what kind of Chandas it is and then the words naturally flow in. So it's a very, very essential part of the Vedic education system, the Chanda Shastram. Mm -hmm. With that background and context, let's move to the second chapter, the algorithms on supercomputing. Some mind-blowing aspects about Chanda Shastram. Let's try and understand that. As I said, Chanda Shastram is all about creating the word combinations that fit in the predefined rhythmic templates to create that harmonious and memorizable experience with the slokas and mantras and whatnot. So as part of this process, you have to construct different kinds of words that fit into these templates. Here is where you have to deal with heavy calculations on the number of permutations and combinations possible with the letters to create specific words that fit into these rhythmic templates. And to execute such kind of complex calculations, Maharshi Pingalacharya, he gave certain algorithms through which we can execute complex calculations of permutations and combinations in a matter of seconds. And this is the reason why I titled this talk film as the ancient Indian algorithms on supercomputing. And now let us try and understand what are those algorithms. The first algorithm given by Maharshi Pingalacharya is called as Pasthara. Let's say I want to construct a four-lettered word. How can I construct a four-lettered word with different combinations of Lagu and Guru? That is, the short syllables and long syllables. Take a look at this black strip here. There are four-lettered combinations. Lagu, 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 Guru, Lagu, Lagu, Guru, Lagu, Lagu, and so on. Like, these are all possible combinations in which I can construct a four-lettered word. So how can I exhaustively elaborate how many combinations I would be getting for a four-lettered word? Because once I have this exhaustive list of all possible combinations of a four-lettered word, I can substitute real letters into this template to create such kind of a word structure, which will wow. fit into that rhythmic template that we just saw to create a harmonious experience. As you just heard in Vishnu Sahasranamam, Visvam Vishnu Vashatkaro Bhuta in this slokam, words starting with bhav are chosen and all the words are of equal number of syllables. How was this achieved? First of all, I need to understand what should be the basic construct of my word. And to know that, I should know what are all the possible scenarios for that word construct. And this algorithm is basically to calculate that. Mahashi Pingalacharya says, Dvika glau misraucha prudagla misraha. That is the algorithm. There are three steps in this algorithm. And the first step says, Dvika Glau. The translation is, there are two syllables, Guru and Lagu. Dvika Glau. Two syllables, Guru and Lagu. And the second step says, Mishraucha, which means, mix themselves. And the third step of the algorithm says, Prudagla Mishraha, which means, to repeat the step number two and mix themselves again. So let's practically look at this algorithm, how it works. So the first step is Dvika Glau. There are two syllables, Guru and Lagu. And the second step says mix themselves. That means Lagu and Guru once mixed with Lagu. Lagu and Guru once mixed with Guru. So then we have Lagu, 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 Guru, Guru, Lagu, Guru, Guru. That's all the possible combinations in a two-letter word. Now, if you want to go for a three-lettered word, that's when step three kicks in. Prudagla Misraha. It means we have to repeat the same process. So take Lagu, Lagu, Guru, Lagu, Lagu, Guru, and Guru, Guru. This entire four combinations. We need to mix it once with Lagu and once with Guru. Then we have exhaustively all possible combinations for a three-lettered word. Lagu, 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 Guru, Lagu, and so on. Next, if you want the four-lettered word combination scenarios, repeat the same process again. Same way for fifth, sixth, wow. seven, n-lettered word. You have to repeat this process mm -hmm. n times so that you have all possible syllable combinations to fulfill your word construct. Mm -hmm. If we follow the exact step-by-step -step approach given in this algorithm, we'll end up with the syllable sequencing, which when replaced with ones and zeros is nothing but your binary number system. The wow. origins of binary number system are very much from Chanda Shastra. And of course, this entire step-by-step -step approach is encoded into a formula of 2 to the power of n. So that means if you want all possible combinations for a three-lettered word, 2 raised to the power of 3, that's 8. So you have 8 combinations. Dvika glau misraucha prudagla misraha. 21st, 22nd, and 23rd sutras, 8th adhyayam of Chanda Shastram written by Pingalacharya. Here is where the origins of binary number system, that very basic wow. idea, came from. And if you want more information on this one, do your research in this line and get to know the truth for yourself. So that was about the first algorithm, Prasthara, to calculate all possible word combinations. Moving to the second algorithm, Nashtam. This algorithm is to precisely derive what would be the digital or the syllable sequence for a given position. Imagine that I'm dealing with a four-lettered word combination. 
I have 16 possible scenarios. Of that 16 possible scenarios, how would like my seventh position be? What is exactly the syllable sequencing in this seventh position? To calculate that, this algorithm called Nustum is used. Now, I will not walk through the algorithms in detail. That's going to be huge. That's for you to research and understand if you're interested. But 24th, 25th Sutras, 8th Adhyayam, Chanda Shastram is all about Nustam, which is an algorithm um. to calculate the digital or syllable sequencing for a specific position in total word possibilities to be used in a Samskrutam slogan. The third algorithm given by Maharshi Pingalacharya is called Uddishtam. And this algorithm is the converse of Nastam, the previous one. In this algorithm, you have the digital sequence or the syllable sequence, and you should be calculating the position where it will fit in the entire long list of possible word combinations. Now, I have this combination called Laghu, 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 Laghu. Where in the entire sequence of the word combinations for a four-lettered word will this Laghu, 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 Laghu will go and sit? Same way for each of these. So, 26th and 27th Sutras, 8th Adhyayam, Chanda Shastram by Pingalacharya. It elaborates about Uddishtam, which is an algorithm to calculate the positional number. I repeat the word, the positional number for a digital resolvable sequence in the total word possibilities. Up next is the fourth algorithm, Sankhya. This algorithm is to calculate the total number of possible combinations for an n-lettered word. Say, for instance, if I have a five-lettered word, now I want to calculate the total number of possibilities in a five-lettered word the different combinations of Guru, Lagu, the syllable sequencing. How many different possible scenarios are there for five-lettered word? I can just tell it a snap of a finger saying two raised to the power of five, which is 32. So that's it. But here we are not talking about substituting values into formulas. Here we are talking about ancient algorithms that cracked this problem thousands of years ago. Now, this algorithm is just to calculate how many possible word combinations you will be getting for an n-lettered word. Follow this algorithm and you'll get to know no matter how big your word is, you can just simply calculate the total number of word possibilities for your syllable sequence. So 28th to 31st Sutras 8th Adhyayam Chanda Shastra by Pingalacharya is the algorithm called Sankhya, which is to calculate total number of possible combinations for an n lettered word to be used in a Sanskrit. Up next is the fifth algorithm, Lagakriya. Most sophisticated algorithm of all, and also my personal favorite. Maharshi Pingalacharya is the one who designed Meru Prasthara, which is unfortunately called as Pascal's Triangle. 26th and 27th Sutras of 8th Adhyayam Chanda Shastra by Pingalacharya. Pare na Purnam, Pare Purnamiti. This algorithm, when executed, gives us this triangular arrangement of numbers, an incredibly powerful tool for many calculations. Now, I already covered a step-by-step -step approach of the entire Mehru Prasthara as part of another doc film of mine, which is the relationship of Samskritam with computing. I'll try to leave the link in the description below. You can go and check that video, but in this video, I'm not going to repeat all that construction of this triangular arrangement of numbers called Mehru Prasthara. However, as a quick touch and go, Maharshi Pingalacharya designed this Meru Prasthara for this specific purpose. Let's see what it is. Let's get back to the rhythmic templates that we have. So one of the template, imagine that it enforces you to construct a five letter word with one lagu and four gurus. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the possible number of combinations with one lagu and four gurus? Of course, today you have the formula of NCR, you substitute and you'll get the value. That's fine. Again, we are talking about ancient algorithms. So in the algorithm of Lagakriya, Maharshi Pingalacharya gives us the construct of this triangular arrangement of numbers, which acts as a lookup table to quickly just find out how many combinations are possible. So let's see how simple it is. We need a five letter word. Go to the row number five, and then we need one Lagu and four Guru combination. So starting from the left to right, if you count, the first mm -hmm. box represents zero Lagus and five Gurus. And the second box, one Lagu and four Gurus, which is five. So there are five possibilities, like I gave here, in which you can construct a five-letter word with one lagu and four gurus, perfectly given in their respective positions. Mm -hmm. Same way, you want a 20-letter word with 12 gurus and eight lagus. Just extend this Meru Prasthara to row number 20 and look up the value just like that. Incredible amount of competition with respect to the combinations can just be done in a matter of less than two seconds if you have this Meru Prasthara. Now, that is the power of the supercomputing. Wow. That's how I wish to call this. Nonetheless, so that is the power of the algorithms given by Pingalacharya as part of Chanda Shastra. Wow. I will not go much technically into the subject. If you're interested, go and do your research and learn for yourself. Wow, I did not really expect this is going to be so technical. But man, I mean, the culture is, Indian country is so rich. Like, always going back to the source and figuring out like how the civilization were just so much smarter than we are here right now. It's bizarre. Like, I mean, did you guys have the knowledge of that, of that at all that, you know, this is kind of, uh, you know, it's just mathematics. Com I don't know what the English word combinatorics, we say combinatorics here, uh, you know, part of mathematics. It's just impressive. It's just totally like 
truly blows my mind. But let me know if you knew about that part of Indian culture and history uh, in the comments below. I would be super curious. Like my, my mind is literally still being blown. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> I think I just have to go and consume uh, and then you sit a bit with myself to absorb all of this. But uh, I found this really informative and very interesting and i hope you enjoyed this video too and if you did please give a thumbs up share a like and subscribe to this channel and i'll see you in the next one until then please do take care sending much much love